Hi, my name is Christian. I'm from Hamburg in Germany. And I want to start with by borrowing an experiment from Vincent Zimmer of Chiron. Imagine you're 20 years old. Imagine you're in Aleppo, Syria. Imagine you will be leaving Aleppo, Syria within the next two minutes. And imagine you haven't packed yet. What will you pack? <laughs> so now, hands up, please, if you thought of your transcript of records, or your high school diploma, or your bachelor's certificate. That's what I thought. So the thing is, Integrating refugees into higher education in Germany is not an easy task. It's, there's no one-size-fits-all solution to this. But bureaucracy and the system itself is trying to do just that. So we're developing solutions, we're publishing websites, we're basically trying to figure out one-size-fits-all solutions and processes that integrate refugees into our system. We ask them to adapt to our system, but we ourselves are not willing or incompetent in adapting. And um, the thing is, we don't have many facts. So we don't ask lots of refugees, for example, for their educational attainments. We don't know whether somebody studied nursing or business administration or architecture, for that matter. And we don't know that because we don't ask when somebody applies for asylum. So this is an asylum application form. And we just don't ask for educational attainments all the time. Um, however, we're still trying to distribute information. And we're doing that in formats, and I brought a screenshot um, that is actually off a website, a PDF that people are presented when they want to find out how to access higher education in Germany. Um, and now even, I know a thing or two about the German system of higher ed, being German and you know speaking the language, I can make sense of that. <laughs> and now, now imagine being a refugee and trying to figure out this stuff. And Information is presented in ways that are very 2006 or 2008 maybe, but not 2000, uh, 2016. We also develop online courses to, to deal with that, that deal with the subject of how to integrate refugees into higher education. And in doing so, we have closed platform, closed shops, where um, we ask people for their clear names, for their email addresses, for their profile pictures, and at the end of the registration process, we ask them to identify as asylum seekers in Germany, online. And that's still happening. Um, my institution is not that innocent in that as well. Um, but the thing then is, we, we know too little, and yet we demand adaptation, and we do it all the time. And you have to ask yourself, what can we do? What can others do in, in order to change that? What can online educators do? And there's two statements that came to mind when thinking about this. The first statement is by Shawn Michael Morris, and I'm hoping this slide will come up. I'm way too fast, I guess. <laughs> um, so the first statement is by Shawn Michael Morris, um, and it's taken from the Digital Pedagogy Lab keynote that I'm sure you've all read called Not Enough Voices, or listened to. Um, and he talks about enabling people to be heard, to be listened to, to um, actively make space for them to be heard and to be listened to. So how do we do that? How can online educators actually contribute to that kind of change? What is it that we can do? How do we enable refugees to hack the German system of higher education towards that? The second statement, and I will be paraphrasing here, is by Jonathan Worth. Um, please forgive me. Um, it's from last year's Ignite Talk. And um, Jonathan talked about enabling people to be heard and enabling them to participate in their own representation. And I'm paraphrasing a bit, so won't do it justice. Um, then again, how do you do that? How do you do that for refugees when they want to access higher education in Germany? And um, what do other sources and other communities have to offer? What does digital pedagogy, open pedagogy, connected learning, connected courses, what do they have to offer when it comes to giving access to refugees in the higher education system in Germany? So I have no clear answer to this, and I don't think there is one. But I published a blog post that pretty much sums up this talk in case I screw up too badly. <laughs> and also um, for you to comment and to annotate. And it also links to a Google Doc that I would, I would love your input. You're the expert, so let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the ideas I sketched out. Let me know if they're complete crap. 
Um, but do chime in and try and help figure this out. Thank you. <laughs>